How to be a joyful warrior. How positivity and joy changes your perspective. Join us today on the Wandering But Not Lost podcast. And now your host, Jen O'Brien and Matt Emerson. (laughs) (laughs) Welcome to the WBNL Wandering But Not Lost podcast, where together we align, connect, and prosper. This is episode 307, and you can find all those show notes over at WBNLpodcast.com. Jen O'Brien, we're talking about joy today, and I know that this is probably more happiness than joy or maybe just relief, but I got that tag right the first time today, which I have not been doing for a long time. So well, that made me happy because we oh, are yeah. aligning, connecting, and prospering. Because okay. it really is about align, connect, and prosper. Many things are happening in, in my life at this moment about all those things and more. We're going to continue talking about that on the podcast and actually develop an entire little course around it for you and enhance the course that we already have. So we're going to talk, we've talked about gratitude and joy, but we're going to do it from a little different perspective. We want to cover three things with you today on the podcast. First, understanding joy and positivity. And is that different from happiness? The second thing is the impact of the opposite of that, the impact of being in a negative state. And then three, we've got some strategies for cultivating joy. And that's how that's how we'll cover today's three things in our podcast. Love it. So let's jump into the first little segment on to you, Matt, is joy, you know, we throw these words around. So what is your definition of joy? positivity and is that different from happiness i I go back and forth on this jam because i just really sometimes i i feel like these things well obviously a they are interconnected right right and i don't know which one's the egg and which one's the chicken sometimes but i always kind of look at that your joy leads to happiness and i've read many times that it's the converse of that that happiness can lead to joy but i I really believe that your joy leads to happiness and i think joy is more of that instantaneous yet a long more of a long-term type of situation if i can just give you one thing one example right off the top of the show that i go back to this is kind of a little bit silly but have you seen the movie inside out yes and i love it All right. So, right. It's about your emotions, right? Now, there are a lot of emotions. They're not just five emotions, but they boil those emotions down to joy, sadness, anger, uh, disgust, I believe, and fear, right? So those are the... the, the, Kind of the main ones. Yeah. Well, yeah, they had to, they wanted to condense it down because they didn't want too many characters, right? The key characters in our lives and in that film. (laughs) Right, exactly. Um, But but they chose joy over happiness. So I think joy is a more long, long standing, according to Pixar. Uh, emotion uh, that's out there, right? Well, and you know, joy is a better name for people than being called happiness or happy, even though I think there are people called happy out there. Yeah. And hope. Yeah. Hope's a good name. I think a lot of times, a lot of... A lot of times you will do things that are joyous, right? And then the happiness will be a byproduct in a lot of ways. And we'll talk about that a little more as we go. So for me, I feel like, you know, they're names of things, right? I I think it can become a state of mind. You know, there are a lot of books written on how to be happy and everybody has their own way of about that. But I just think it's a a decision of how you're going to go about your day. I, I believe joy, what you're saying, joy and gratitude lead to, I think it's possible that happiness is a result of the state of being of happiness is a result of having a lot more joyous, positive, grateful moments and coming from that mindset and how you react to things that happen in your day and life can lead to an overall mostly happy versus, you know, sad. And as I think that's what we're all striving for. I think it's crazy to think that you're going to be a hundred percent happy or joyful all the time. We live in a, you know, world where there's a lot of polarity there's the fear and the the fear and love the positive and the you know negative the light and the dark and and that's the duality of what this experience on earth is in my mind so that we can experience the difference between those things that movie uh with the emotions is is perfect because it's like it takes all those emotions you know to feel that how do you know what love is about if you haven't experienced fear and vice versa, right? So you you experience all of it and then it's how you decide to deal with it. So we can't just run around in life pretending that there's not negative things or that we don't get sad over thing over 
issues that happen and that's false, right? You're not allowing yourself to feel the emotions. And I think that's what that movie did a great job of. You've got to feel the emotions and deal with it and then decide how you're going to move on, you know, or go to the next thing. For, yeah, for me. and, and it, 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 interestingly enough, it's not like, you know, I mean, I don't want to use this movie as our whole basis for what we're talking know, about, but, it, but, it, it, but honestly, it. it really it really did do a good job of kind of explaining what's going on in your own head, right? There's all this stuff going on. You have these conflicting yeah. things happening all the time in your head. And Joy wasn't trying to make everyone else joyous because you need all those other emotions, like you just said, right? Joy's, joy is to minimalize maybe a little bit and to help you get through and to help you cope yeah. with things more. So it's- It's really great, right? Th those Pixar yeah. movies are great for all ages. Yeah. Like, okay, yeah. you're, the behind the scenes control thing was great because it's like, come on fear, it's your turn. You're up to bat, you gotta get in here. You gotta, you gotta do your part, right? And that is what I'm talking about. So we're in, that's, a little bit of how we feel, but let's go into the next spot about the impact and negativity. So we've definitely done podcasts and, and cited different specific things, but do you want to take that, Matt, on, you know, what happens to ourselves if we stay in feeling more emotions that are on the negative side? Yeah. I mean, you know, neg negativity. And what causes it? Maybe. Yeah. Well, negativity affects you in so many different ways. I mean, it affects you physically in so many ways, right? When you start getting into what I call the death spiral, <laughs> where you're just, your negativity just gets so bad that, it, it, I mean, it just, if you don't get that in check, I mean, you get into a, a kind of a dark place, right? And, you, you know, where you just feel you, you don't have as much energy. Uh, you, you physically can have aches and pains. All, all, all this can be can directly tied to, you know, your, your mental state or how you are emotionally feeling. It makes you not be as um, uh, uh, thoughtful uh, or, you know, certainly you're not showing as much gratitude. It makes you resent things more. I mean, it just takes you down this path mm -hmm. that, um, that, that once again, if you don't step in and start making some, making, turning that around and, and having a little positivity that it's harder and harder to get out of. And that's why so many, so many times, you know, people that are in negative places in their, their life, I, they're hard to reach and pull back because showering them with joy can often make them more in despair. Yes. Having you right. found that to be true, right? You cannot yes, you can't unwind somebody by throwing too much on them of happiness and positivity. You have to help them understand that, you know, in order to 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 start seeing the light again, you need to reshape your mind, right? Here's the thing that I find so interesting about just mental well-being being, right? <clears throat> Let's just use finances for an example, because I think everybody at one point in their life or many points in their life has financial burdens that make them get into this negative space, right? And and in order to get out of out of out of that, well, here's not that's not that's not good there. Yeah, I, I think you even have stories to share about that. But 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 you know where you where you've taken your business. But but it, it's so interesting that if you just sit in your house today and like and worry about the money that you don't have. Right. And like, oh, my gosh, what am I going to do? What, what's going to happen tomorrow? You know how I have been a failure all the way up to this point or whatever the scenario is. Right. So take that scenario and like, well, OK, I'm not doing very well with my finances, but I can you know, there's opportunity in that. And I can do this, that and something tomorrow that is going to make this situation better. Either one of those emotions, you know, if you take take it all away, it doesn't really change anything around you. Nothing. It's all inside you. You're the one that's creating all of that worry and doubt and, and, yep. and frustration. All of that is in you. The world is exactly the same around you. It's revolving around the sun, right? It, it, nothing is different. So you can't blame those external forces. You have to figure out how to, how to control those within your own, your own self. So I, I so exactly. It, yeah, go ahead. I was, I mean, that's brilliant. And, and that is where when you become aware that you're creating your reality, your moment, your present moment every day because of what you focus on, that's the choice that we all have. That's the power. That's our free will. So if you're in a circumstance that is negative and you're feeling negative emotions, I personally have gone through some of that recently with my great nephew moving away after being here for his first almost 11 years of his life and I'm being involved in his life. He's now moved to Texas because that's a great opportunity, you know, for his family. Uh, however, 
I've gone up and down with the feelings of that. And for me, sometimes I'm a very, for most of the time, Matt is as well, even more so. The glass is half full, not empty kind of person. I see the positives. I work on that. Then I have the times that this happens and I allow myself to work through it. I've gotten better over the years. But the point I'm making is you have a choice. You feel your feelings. Don't not feel your feelings. That's very important. If you do not feel all your feelings, then that can lead to other issues mentally, physically in your body and so forth, right? So where I'm going with that is go however much time that takes for you to process that the on the negative side here for a moment until you can figure out what, and that's what we're going to talk about next. What can you do that helps you stay more in the positive lane than the negative lane? Because if you stay in the negative lane to Matt's point and you keep thinking all the time about lack, scarcity, right. I don't have this, I'm not happy, I don't like the way I look, I don't have enough money, I don't have this, then you are telling the world, the universe, source, what creator, whoever it is that you, whatever your beliefs are, because that's how I believe the how it all works. You need more of that because you're asking, because you're a powerful manifester in your thoughts, whether you're saying them out loud or you're thinking them all along, and your actions are attracting more of the same. Now, if you believe that principle, then you need to get into the other space, where, and we're going to talk about with some specific examples how you can move through that and come into a space to find the gratitude and the happiness and the joy, even in a... A, a, a perceivable negative or upsetting moment, right? Yeah, and that's exactly. What I think powerful. And I experience this all the time because you can stay in that space if you want to. It's your choice. You can stay in that space for months or years or whatever you want to, but that's your choice. It's not something to Matt's point outside of you that created this experience you're having. You decided to have you know to have those feelings and to have those thoughts and to be consumed by that it's your choice you get to decide every day right yeah i, I you know I, I thought a lot about just you know life situations while we were you know preparing for the podcast and i i go back to when my mom passed away a couple of years ago right of course you know no one deals with a parent well i don't want to say no one i don't want to speak for the world but most people <laughs> don't don't deal with the death of, a, of any loved or actually even friends you know um in you know a happy joyous way right um uh there's that grief that's in there and 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 acknowledging that grief obviously is very very important when my mom passed away i this was my mechanism for getting through this in a great way was that i really only focused on all the wonderful times we had together and all the wonderful things that she did for me and what a great positive empowering positive you know woman that she was yep. right that to me was uh, so much uh, so much a, a better way to move forward than oh my god i'm never going to get to see my mom again or oh my god we're never going to experience this again well no because you already experienced all those things that's why right. you know talking about joy and happiness and all of that you know your memories. What are your memories, Jan? Are your memories joyful? I mean, are your joy, your, your your memories your happiness? I mean, that's because your memories are so those kind of memories. Because you know, you, of course, you remember bad things in your life too. But hopefully, you are remembering more of the happy things or the joyous that's things right. in your life, right? That you can recall and and look and you know and and which also can be a great tool to help you get out of a funk, right? So. I think you bring up a valid point because I think every human being has had a life here on this earth, this current life you're having, where you've experienced all of the ups and downs and yeah. positives. And some people have had, you know, if you, it's not about comparing my trauma to your trauma or my happiness to your happiness. It's yeah. your experience. And, but you just made a great point uh, just about remembering whether it's a mom or a dad or even a pet. OK, uh, somebody that's special to you. Do you well, pets are, are, are an example oh. of unconditional love? There's usually not yeah. negative experiences interacting with pets because we have pets in our lives to, to remember what it's like to be present in the moment. I think children and pets do that for us. Present in the moment is look at a little kid and that there's just literally in the moment and they're most of the time happy and joyful unless something's upsetting them, which is just a momentary thing. But pets for sure are all about unconditional love and we can learn from them, right? But your point about if 
if you look at your life, however old you are, and where do you dwell most of your time on? If you had a whole bunch of things happen in your life and you focus on all of that all the time, then, th then that's the life that you're choosing to have an experience of. And I'm not trying to downplay anybody's trauma or no. bad experiences that they had. You had those experiences and, and hopefully you've worked through or you're working through or you're going to get some closure on that or you're going to figure out how to leverage or use that for what, what, why did that experience go on for you? Just like a positive experience, right? So I think that, you know, I'm more like you. I, I focus on the positives that I had growing up. The, the, I, I choose to, when I remember people passing, I think of all the things that I'm happy about knowing and having them in my life. You know, I don't really spend a lot of time on the things that weren't, that weren't positive. That's just me, but you know, and I'm not, somebody might say, well, you're not really dealing with the things that, ha no, I've dealt with all of that. So it's just, a, right. it's an idea. Why don't we jump into. Wait, before you, before you jump into that, I just want to talk about some other positive emotions, right? So happiness and joy are not the only positive emotions. Oh, yeah. There's a few other ones, right? The, uh, another positive uh, uh, emotion is interest, right? If you have an interest in something, you're out there learning, you're getting more information, you're growing, right? So that is also positivity. Uh, I would throw curiosity on top of interest. Yeah, that's a good one too. I curiosity like, I like that word. Absolutely. Uh, contentment. That's another one. Contentment is a, a positive emotion. Pride is a positive emotion, right? And uh, love, obviously, is a powerful uh, positive emotion as well. So there's a lot of things that you can focus on in your life to help you, uh, you know, circumvent the the, the negativity or, or, or you know, kind of help you cope with the situation. And be more right. resilient, right? To help you be more resilient right. against it. So right. all of and you know, we were before we segue out of the negative seg, the ne you know, negativity and what it impacts you. One of the things that for sure can happen to all of us is the the news and social media, currently and always. Okay, to me, is more negative than positive. It's hard to find a channel. This is what I do on, uh, I really redid some of my social media channels because of the algorithm so that I could only, because, it, it, okay, this is just a great metaphor for what I was talking about, what you create, an algorithm, okay, which is literally, you know, a computer generated process that says you as a, a person consuming social media, I don't care what the platform is likes to look at these kind of videos and get this information. So we're going to serve up more of that to you. That to me is exactly what the universe is doing. Yep. So if I want to change what I'm seeing in my social media channel, just like if I want to change what's showing up for me in life, I need to reset it. I need to stop watching things that are uh, you know, negative and hate based or, or it starts to show you more of that or sensational was the word I was looking for the news headlines. Oh my God, do you believe that this happened? Or here's this terrible disaster that just happened. Negative stuff that's meant to bring your energy down. So I completely shut down a profile, started a new one and purposely chose the joyful, happy, educational, informative, uplifting creators I wanted to listen to because now the algorithm is saying, the algorithm, the universe is saying, oh, you want more of this in your life. Let's give it to you. You know what? That is brilliant, Jen O'Brien. We should have uh, entitled this episode, Joy, <laughs> Recalibrating Your Personal Algorithm, because that is exactly, exactly what it is. And can I tell you that what happens sometimes on my new profile that is positive, and it's so interesting, this al this analogy is so spot on for me right now because it explains everything. Because now I'm in the channel that I like, and it's on TikTok. It's my personal one I like to follow. I started to watch a few things that were over here. It pulled me over here. All I had to do to change the way my algorithm moved and started showing me more things was I started to watch a few things that were more into the, the news and the headlines and the negativity. And I just noticed this yesterday. I was like, why do I have all this crap in my algorithm? And I had to go, I did that. I decided to watch, to think about, I want to go see what's happening with 
the world or what's happening, who said what in the election, uh, presidential election stuff right now, what party said this or that. I started watching that. Now I'm seeing all that again. And I'm like, no, I don't want this. Right. So I had to stop and go, I know what I have to do. And I just went back. This is really what I had to do. And this is all you have to do. We're going to give you five ways to do this. I had to purposely go start looking at and bring in better positive information and consuming it in my morning meditations and the things that I like to do. So I'll start seeing more of that again. And that made me feel better. Isn't that amazing? That literally happened to me. That's fantastic. All right. So let's talk about five, five strategies that will cultivate more joy happiness, even love in your life. Okay. So the first one is gratitude practices. Now we, we have done tons on gratitude. We, have. we do, we're going to do it again in November. We'll go deeper into it in November. We always like to use the month of November here at WBNL coaching as the month of gratitude to remind you that it's not just November that we're grateful. We're it's a daily practice, right? Do you want to start with some thoughts on gratitude, Matt? And I just well, have a, you know, a I, thing to share. It's funny because I just think that gratitude is just it's it can be all around you all the time. It's super simple stuff like just ignore. Hey, it's a it's a simple sometimes just listening to someone <laughs> when someone's speaking, right? <laughs> that that alone. Yeah. Can do it. It's smiling at someone. It's being a, a a courteous driver, right? I mean, it's like these holding the door open for someone. You told the story not too long ago about someone holding the door open for you. Yeah. You wouldn't even realize what was happening until you were through the door and you're like, holy crap, someone just held the door for me. This is the most awesome thing. Those you little know, things <laughs> ripple and other people will then go do the same thing because of the, the little act of kindness that somebody might have done yeah. to you. And that to me, that's what that those are the basic tenets of gratitude. I think that, you know, you don't it doesn't it is not something that you have to it's not a big deal if you just incorporate those little things into your life they just bring you happiness i'll tell you what they do every time i do something like that it warms my heart i can feel yeah. myself i can literally feel my body happier <laughs> you know what i mean yeah, it's right it, it to, is so easy yeah we have a thousand. go ahead I'm sorry, to say what you're grateful for. So whether you do that in a daily practice or gratitude journal or uh, nightly reflections, or to me, I'll do that when I'm in the shower or taking a walk. We've talked about yeah. that numerous times. Yeah. Be noticing and having some gratitude. You can, when you, when you know that you are really getting into the deeper part of gratitude and not just saying it because I do this practice where I say three things I'm grateful for, if you can feel it, as Matt was just saying, you'll you'll know that it's you're really doing the practice when you have a wave of emotion come over you uh you know what i mean like you're and then you that's the energy that you're looking for right and it can be done with lots of little simple acts of like smiling all those things that you just said are so powerful i want to share uh Eckhart Tolle, the author of a very powerful book, The Power of Now. I uh, love this book. In fact, it's popped up in my life numerous times lately, and I have it in my Audible, and I'm going to listen to it again. That's how much I'm listening to the, uh, the symbols and the signs I'm getting, like, I need to read that book. So here it is. The more grateful you are for what is, the more things will come to you. To be grateful means an appreciation, an alignment, for what is and and what he's saying and what this meant to me is it's kind of what we've been just talking about can you find the gratitude in what is happening for you right now not thinking about the future and he goes on to say things like you know there is no future the future is just going to be the present moment that when you get to it <laughs> okay so it's that whole point of our lives are made up of nothing but present moments and why we get stuck in the future in the past is here in our third dimensional world there's time right the third dimension is time when you look at mathematically or scientifically one dimension two dimension three dimension time comes in kind of like in the fourth dimension and that is the linear thing that we're stuck in this is why we have the memories and and i think a lot of people it, this will tell you a lot about how you get, keep yourself away from being in the present moment because this was the aha in the book to me. You'll find your ego mind is going to get you away from the present moment because in the present moment is where all your power is and where you'll be able to c 
connect with your kind of super conscious and your conscious higher self when if it can keep you distracted from being there then it kind of has an existence i'm not saying we should get rid of the ego it helps us live our world but here's what happens to us we're either back in the past reliving things that happened that might not have been uh they could have been positive and you could be stuck in positive things that you're you're and, and you're keeping yourself in the past but mostly it's negative things and it's a lot of guilt or shame or issues like that or you're in the future you're not here so you're not here if you're thinking about the past all the time good or bad you're not here if you're thinking about the future all the time and future is unknown for for all of us and so that brings stress and anxiety so a lot of people live their lives stress and anxiety jumping back over here or maybe you're in one or uh, of the other camps it doesn't matter if you're not if you're in one of those spaces you're not here and this quote is about can you find gratitude for what you have right now and one more thing i want to say on gratitude and we've talked about it so much is something i I, I listen to a few people say the same thing. Gr you, if you're able to be grateful for what you have now, even though it's not perfectly what you want, I'm going to give you an example. Let's say you're driving a beat up old car mm -hmm. and you don't like this car. Okay. And you're constantly saying things like, Oh, this car, I hate this car. You know, I really want this car. And you go through all this visualization exercises of like, my perfect car is this and you you know you watch all these videos and books and stuff to say just write down what it is you want and 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 visualize it and know that you can manifest it but here's the here's how you can sort of undo all of that because if you cannot find a way to be grateful for the car that you have right now the universe is going you're not we're not bringing you more because you're not even being grateful right now for what you have and that's what he's talking about here so how can you go i love my car my car i'm driving right now is not is not the car i want to be driving but let me tell you what i'm grateful for about my car my car i was able to get this car because i in a time that i had some financial issues my sister co-signed guess what i'm grateful for i just paid off that car that car it does not have the get up that i would like that previous cars that i've had so i'll be driving and i'll i'll i found myself saying this car and then i started going i gave my car a name okay <laughs> and i am like this car runs smoothly it gets me where i need to go i'm grateful i don't have a car payment anymore i'm grateful for that car every day that i drive around i wash it and take care of it and keep it clean and that is how i am grateful for the car and i know eventually the next car will come and honestly it's not even about a car for me anymore but i would like to drive a different car but i don't need it right now and that is an example of how do you find gratitude for what is right now or do you go and you can insert your example because we all right, do because there's a million of them right? all right so be grateful for what you have now and i'll give one more example let's say that you had a fender bender you're on to work because uh, for, for me i still work on triggers that come from um uh, freaking driving okay traffic and people's behaviors show up in in um in anger and whatever they're feeling in the energy yeah. that's in the air really shows up in driving and i'm better than i used to be at this but i want to just share an, an example of if you were let's say you're on your way to work or to go do an errand or whatever and you get into a little fender bender okay now you have a this is the example of can you find gratitude in in that I, yeah you can if you want to okay because that's the point can you be grateful depending on what happened in the situation i'm grateful that that wasn't worse than it could have been i'm grateful nobody was hurt i'm just giving an example um, I'm grateful that I have insurance. Okay. I'm grateful that that person had insurance because they bumped into me. I'm grateful that who knows, maybe this happened because it's helping me. It helped me not get into another scenario. There's all these people that tell stories of like that happened. And then they went over here and there was a worse situation mm -hmm. uh, or people not getting on the plane that crashed, you know, and I'm trying to say, I mean, it can be as crazy as that, but my point is you get to decide how you're going to react to that fender bender or this thing that happened or that guy that cut you off in traffic. Be and how you decide to go deal with that can keep can now change your energy and change your emotions for hours if not the rest of the day which i used to do somebody cutting me off me yelling at them or cussing at them would definitely impact me for hours now 
I really work on saying, okay, I get you're in a hurry. Um, it's all good. And occasionally I'll have it come up if I'm having one thing after another happen and it will show up there. But I think it's the, it's me having experiences to try to help me realize you're still not there, Jan. So we're going to give you this other experience and see how you deal with it. All right. So anyway, that's just and how you do that and how you react to something like that. If, especially if you're with somebody else, car crash is a perfect example. Talk about diffusing a situation, right? If you are, if everyone's yelling, it just escalates into more yelling and, and maybe even more than that, right? But if one person's a little more calm about it and they're a little bit mm -hmm. more, you know, positive about it, uh, it can diffuse the whole thing. So, so gratitude can be simple. So, and it's just an attitude. Gratitude, attitude. Number two is mindfulness and meditation. Man, we've talked so much about that. We have a great download that you can get. Don't make this difficult. Listen, just mindfulness and meditation is an opportunity for you on a daily basis where however, a couple times a day you can be breathing you can do it in the morning you can do it whenever you have some downtime to just try to get yourself to calm down breathing will do it if you just do some deep breathing you could be in your car park somewhere and i'll just go to a park and if i just take five minutes breathe and try to slow down what your thoughts are and try to get to a place of no thought that's really what mindfulness and meditation will do and, and that opens up your brain to be able to get more uh, you know downloads more more information that's positive this is where you can get some insights yeah. and you could get probably you know going to sleep at night is another example of setting intentions that when you're in your dream state that you maybe you have an issue maybe you're trying to figure out how to deal with a problem that you're dealing with another person or whatever Turn it over to your subconscious mind. Go to sleep with the intent that you'll get it resolved and you'll wake up with a resolution and you'll be inspired to get that resolved. And be ready when you wake up. Yep. Set an expectation that when you wake up, you're going to remember. Have a little journal or something to write stuff down. People talk about that all the time. I've done some of that before. But don't make it difficult. Five minutes. All you're doing in meditation is slowing things down, trying to get yourself into the present moment by acknowledging your thoughts and letting them go and seeing if you can find quiet. Right. Yep. We have a whole bunch of things that you can go get some apps that help you with that. Just start doing it and you get better at it. It's like, it's like going to the gym. Right. Exactly. It is. A good exactly. And the difference between mindfulness and meditation to me is meditation can be a practice of some sort. Mindfulness is a, again, it's kind of like gratitude. It's a, it's a discipline of doing things mindfully. So you can be in the moment when you're doing everyday tasks like taking a shower, driving to work, washing your clothes, washing your dishes, brushing your teeth, little simple daily tasks. Can you bring yourself to the task where you're in the moment of doing that and not have all these things in your head about what you what you have to go to next and what you're worried about, right? That's mindfulness. Keep, mindfulness and meditation help you get to the present moment. What's the next one, Matt? It's uh, the power of laughter and humor. I love this. I, I find myself uh, always uh, pretty smiley and laughy. Have you ever been in a situation where you get into that that uh, that laughter where you cannot stop laughing and until your stomach yes. hurts? It's and contagious. Like yeah, and it's contagious, and it's just there. It, it, it's it's a wonderful euphoric situation. This is when you know you don't do this enough is when you do that, you say, man, I haven't laughed like that in a long time, right? Now you yep. can't make yourself laugh. Things have to be funny to you, right? You can put yourself in a lot of situations where things that, you know, things that you enjoy, like television and movies and things like that, you know, are funny. I'm telling you, I am, talk about being grateful. I am so grateful to have found my soulmate in life because we laugh all, all the, the time. time, all the time. I mean, laugh. I mean, we and we'll, we'll. There'll be situations that'll happen. Okay, I'll tell this little story. All right. I'm, you know, I'm, I'm a home. I'm, I, I, you know, I work from home. My, my wife's a school teacher. She's out all the time, so I do a lot of the household tasks and stuff, right? So I was cleaning the bathroom one day, and she comes in, and I'm down there, you know, scrubbing things out, and she thought to herself, you know what? There's got to be a better. So she was at the store and she found this little thing that was, was, I don't even know what it was called, but it's some sort of device, right, that had, was on a pole and it scrubs and blah, blah, blah. So she bought it. She's like, hey, this will help you out. You don't have to be. <laughs> right? So I was getting it out. <laughs> this happens to us all the time. And I'm, actually, this happens to everybody. You're watching TV and you can't find the clicker. The clicker has disappeared. Oh, my gosh. Yes. Right. 
So I am getting this implement out and I'm putting it together and I have the pole <laughs> together and she's like, where's the clicker? I, I can't hear this or I don't want to watch this anymore, blah, 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 whatever she was saying. And I don't know what got into my head, but I decided to use that thing as the like metal detector. So I'm like, around she's, she's looking at me like, what the F are you doing? Where's the clicker? Because I knew where the clicker was, right? So it's like, and then finally she got it and she started laughing, which got me to laughing. And I am telling her I to laugh for 15 minutes about that because it was the stupidest thing ever. But oh my God. And here's the thing about that one particular situation that when you have a situation like that, it, you can laugh about that for a long time. Last yes. night, I was doing some yoga last night or some stretches, right? <laughs> we were in the same room together and she couldn't find the clicker again and not finding the clicker triggered that one time when I was trying to find, and she started laughing. I'm like, what the hell are you laughing at? Cause nothing was funny. She's like, well, dude, she goes, make that noise. I'm like, what? She goes, make that noise of finding the clicker. Did you get the clicker detector out, Matt? No, so I didn't get the, the actual detector out, but I was like, beep, boop, 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 boop. she's like, aha, here it is. And we started I, laughing again. You know what I mean? See, so laughter is a, it is the best medicine. It, it is, is the best medicine. medicine. And you can do things just from that. And, 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 but honestly, sometimes just, watching shows that make you laugh or whatever can really, you know, there's so many studies that are out there about people that are going through major medical treatments and, you know, cancer treatments and so forth and how they'll watch comedies because they get them laughing. And it's then the laughter is what just happened to us. Look at how your body already starts to make an adjustment just from laughing and having fun. And I, and I love that. Uh, let, all right. So we love that one. And then what about just engaging in activities that bring you joy? So this is being purposeful in activities outside of your daily, you know, work schedule that are like hobbies or things that you do together with loved ones or, you know, so I'll give you an example of something that's really got me a couple things that are really help, you know, having planned activities that are bigger activities really yeah. gives you uh, things to look forward to, right? So, so tomorrow is Saturday as we record this. It's it, tomorrow will be Saturday, August 31st. Now that is, this is the first week of college football. There were games on last night. It was very exciting. But the Georgia Bulldogs kick off tomorrow Go dogs. at 9 o'clock playing Clemson Tigers, which is going to be a great game. And I am looking forward to going to the Georgia Alumni Association's meets at the uh, McMullen's Irish Pub even at nine o'clock. Now this game is nine o'clock in the morning and I am so I've been happy all week thinking about this, mm -hmm. you know? So just this idea of, of an event that's coming up and it's and Dustin, my nephew is going to come join me and we're going to be around other people who are fans of the Georgia Bulldogs. Now this is a super Saturday because the other thing that we're going to go do that we'll sometimes do together, him and I, we do it all the time together is we play Pokemon go. Okay. So Pokemon go the app on the phone it's supposed to get you up and get you out and walking around. And then you play the game and you catch the Pokemon. Well, tomorrow is community day. So we have game at nine o'clock community day goes from two to five, which is a day that you, you, there's one particular Pokemon character and they're everywhere. And then you have these little challenges. We enjoy doing that. We're going to do that. Then to culminate this day of days, a five-star day, we're going to my favorite band in the universe's concert. 21 Pilots is here in, ta in town in Vegas. And I'm getting to go see the new Clancy new, new album tour. And I've been listening to their music. And there's some of those songs. You talk about things that can help you move into a happy place. And emotional. I swear I got emotional in several ways. Joyful listening to a few songs that always do it for me when I'm listening to these guys' songs and the lyrics and stuff. And that is a perfect example of doing fun things with loved ones. I have okay. I'm having joy about it and I haven't experienced it yet. It's all gonna be tomorrow. <laughs> okay, I have an add-on story to that, Jan. I was trying trying to figure out where I was gonna fit this in. This is the perfect place to fit this in because right. I'm thinking about how come like Laura and I love to go on trips, right? And we haven't been able to go on trips for a few years because we have a situ medical situation with our our uh, feline that we have to, uh, you know, we have to attend to. So we can't get out and just go for weeks like we used to be able to do. <clears throat> but then I was thinking about planning trips and how 
how I, we just love to plan trips. We would plan them a year ahead of time usually and get reservations and, and do all that. And then I, and it's not that the trip is not, doesn't meet the expectation, but the planning process, why can it be so much more, bring me so much more joy to plan something than the actual event happens to end up being? And then I, so I was researching that and planning is, has got so many attributes that are positive and joyful. For example, it's the anticipation, just what you were talking about. Yeah, I'm telling you, you brought this up to me a couple of days ago and you're still excited and you cannot wait until tomorrow, right? So planning this, the anticipation <laughs> of doing this has made you happy for three days or four days or whatever it's been, right? Because it, it lets you look forward to something. Um, in, in planning something, it, it starts, uh, you know, uh, getting you more into that creative and imaginative space, right? So not only were you planning like, well, we're going to go to the game, we're going to do this other stuff around this, and we're going to make this a bigger thing, and I'm going to, I'm putting it together this whole thing that we're going to do, right? So it, it enhances your creativity and your imagination. You have a sense of control and autonomy when you're planning, because you know you don't know how it's going to actually go when you go to the game. What if there's going to be people there that mess up your time or whatever? When you're planning, it's like this is going to be the perfect thing, the perfect scenario and it gives you that control and control is also like everyone likes a little control right the actual planning process allows you to escape from your routine of whatever you're doing that particular day so it's it, it actually says okay i'm taking a pause on what i'm doing in my normal thing and i'm going to plan something and i'm going to escape my whatever's happening in your life is not happening during that that planning time right, right there it gives you the social connection. You just talked about that. You got to talk to your nephew and then you're going to do this afterwards. So planning something also allows you to usually talk to other people about what they'd like to do during that situation or something like that. So it, it brings that whole thing in there. And then the joy of learning out, you, you know, as far as travel goes, you, you know, you're, you get the opportunity to research things that you might want to see and learn about that you didn't know that you, that you were even going to do, right? If you're doing like a, a major, you know, planning situation. So all of those things are happening during the planning process and typically will stay with you all the way through until the event. That's why I look back on it and think to myself, gosh, we used to plan trips a year ahead and we were euphoric about that for an entire year, right? That whole thing. And that's why sometimes the actual <laughs> event's a little bit of a letdown. It's like, I've been looking forward to this for a long time. And now we had a flat tire, blah, 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 blah. Mm -hmm. Now the trip itself is going to have all kinds of other things that bring you joy. But but the the planning right. process, it's it, it allows you in a unique way to have sustainable happiness and joy throughout that whole time while you're waiting and anticipating the trip to happen. So I, I, it's exciting to me to think about your day tomorrow because I cannot wait to talk to you on Sunday because I'm and, sure again, it's going to be a wonderful time. But it has been not just that day. It has it been be. a week. Right, yeah. or it's been a month, or it's been a year of waiting for it you. To just happen. shared the example. I got those tickets six months ago, yes, and so I have been having little thoughts of it. But you just gave, gave another great example of how something like planning the a trip or this this Saturday, in in your preparation, especially for a big trip, in your preparation of what you're doing on that daily basis in the moment, you're finding joy in that moment, even yeah. though you're, you know, I don't want to be contradictory about thinking about a future yeah. event, but you just brought it back to how it's a process and you can be doing things that are keeping you positive and focus about something that's going to happen in the future because you're planning it. Like, especially a trip. I know what you're talking about. It's that board over there beside yeah. you where yeah. you guys will do, you know, you work together, you and Laura will plan things out and she does research and you do research. And then you really get into how you're going to make these trips and you, you, you still can you still do that on a smaller scale so oh, back to your you can't do these bigger things you take day trips you know and, and we can kind of finish it all up here with this idea around even though you are restricted because of one of your cat's medical condition that you have to take care of there's things to be grateful for you have this amazing cat you know he's in better yeah. health um, you know, you you get the joy of that stuff that we were talking well, about. You know it's so funny. I mean, I mean, we're going long here today. I'm, we're sorry, people, if you're still listening. <laughs> we're sorry we're going long, but let me tell you something. I thought it was going to be like 20 joy, minutes. <laughs> joy the cat, the cat's uh, conversation. So on that very note, you know, we talk about sometimes we'll be like, oh, it's, we're so sad we can't get out and travel again. 
So we can, but we immediately turn that sadness into exactly what you're talking about. That's right. We have, we have elongated and and made the life of our our cat. Well, we've saved his life. I That's mean, right. it's something to be joyous about, right? But then, getting back to what I was talking about earlier about the memories and how joyous past trips have been, aren't we grateful and aren't we fortunate that we were able to do all that traveling That's and right. do all that stuff that we were able to do in the past? So it we we are not caught up in this. I said death spiral earlier, or doomsday loop about, oh my God, we can't travel. No, yeah, well, I mean, it, it is absolutely not a big deal to me because I know, A, we'll travel again someday, right? And and B, we've been so fortunate to be able to do all the stuff we've done. So, it, it, you know, it's the mindset shift always. You can, your, your mindset, you're your shape shifting all the time in your brain. Mm -hmm. We have one last one, and then we'll just wrap up, and that is volunteering and acts of kindness. Okay, so we mentioned a little bit of simple acts of kindness, smiling, and so forth. But it's amazing to me. I had a, I read a story recently about how a simple thing like the pay it forward idea. A lady yeah. had a story about how she had no idea how much she had impacted doing this small thing. A lady in line in front of her in a grocery store had didn't have enough money. Um, to like just 70 cents short from paying her bill. And she just said, don't worry, I've been there. Here it is. And don't feel bad. And later through an interesting story, found out how much that changed her life because she runs into her again or something lines up and she finds out that rippled caused her to pay it forward. And she ends up, you know, volunteering in a food bank, helping other people as she moved through her life. So you never know what little random act of kindness that you do could then have an impact moving forward. And volunteering is giving up your time. Yeah. I just had the thought the other day, I told you, Matt, that I yeah. got a renewal for my uh, veteran, um, le uh, American Legion veterans group. And I, I had the thought, I wonder how I could volunteer in this group. I've been wanting to do something to give back to veterans. So mm -hmm. you know what that is for you. And that is another way where you're impacting and you're, and you're doing impacting in, in small ways and bringing joy to other people. So it's it's very uh, very important to get out there and just do the get simple. Up, get up. Time, okay? Crazy. So we have a few resources that we'll just put in the show notes. So we do have that meditation download. A couple books I'm just recommending. The obviously the Power of Now by Eckhart Tolle. Anything by Brene Brown is going to help in this respect, where she talks a lot about vulnerability, but she also has a lot of con content around joy and. And, and gratitude. Uh, Dr. Joe Dispenza, I'm really into him right now. I really like that. Um, the Astonishing Power of Emotions by Abraham Hicks, Esther Hicks. Love this book. This book is really cool stuff about how powerful our emotions are and how that can shift everything. And of course, watch that movie Inside Out, right? <laughs> I was hoping you were going to read that or rewatch it if you haven't seen it. I'm going to make a commitment. Before Inside Out 2 is out. Okay, before, back next week, I am going to watch Inside Out 2, Inside Out 2 and we can talk about it next week when we go when we get together. We should have a watch party and watch that together. <laughs> yeah, that would be fun, actually. Yeah, we should do that. Like, yeah. All right, what do we have coming up? Speaking of joyous and happiness. Well, Thank speaking of joyous and happiness, next week on episode 308, we are actually going to have happy hour in the WBNL podcast studio where we're going to just sit back and, you know, have a little real conversation with probably a couple IPAs. I, that's what I'm going to have. I don't know what dance <laughs> things at the table. But but right. we'll talk we'll 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 just, you know, just kind of talk about what we are thinking about right now. We'll talk about things you know affected us and, and uh, you know how we're getting through things and how we're being more joyful and i don't know we're just gonna we're just gonna play it by ear it's gonna be an impromptu jam session which yeah, i'm really looking forward to and then down the line obviously we got great stuff coming up this fall jan already talked about it we have our gratitude episode coming up some business planning will be in the mix here we have a couple interviews or a few interviews that we have lined up yep. here for so great q4 well, it's still one month of Q3 left, but great Q4 coming up uh, in uh, on the- Get you ready for 2025, where it's time to start talking about all those great things and exactly. how to do it more simply and with joy and be a joyful warrior. That's right. That is exactly right, Channel Brian. Find uh, your joy, right. everyone. I want to remind everyone that over on our website, you can align, connect, and prosper even more and get more resources, uh, resources, information over on the website at wbnlcoaching.com. Go to the more tab up in the menu, drop down to resources, and we have courses and videos, book recommendations, wandering tips. There's some great swag on there as well that you can, you can uh, purchase that will make you uh, walk around with joy. 
and gratefulness uh, uh, in your clothing too. So that's over at WBNLcoaching.com. Uh, and then for the show notes for this episode, go over to WBNLpodcast.com. That's also on our website. You can get to the podcast. Uh, this was episode 307. Um, and we'll have all this information in there, plus a whole lot more. And I might even put in my video of how you can effectively find a clicker in your house with a bathroom appliance. So <laughs> now, you know, That's probably, you know, a little too personal, <laughs> but anyway, that'll all be over there. So until next time, align, connect, prosper, and, and find your joy, right? And then of course, be Every perfect, day. but not lost. Um, that, um, that analogy just came to me in the moment of uh oh, that, was of, a good one. Um, that was a really good completely analogy. i completely had it happen to me this last week i'm like why this was the thing i only wanted to see this now i'm seeing this but i did it i brought more of that shit right. to mind and it was more of this politics stuff that oh, i didn't I want to that. yeah, that's super powerful that's why when you're yeah. so funny because uh, you know you could obviously the algorithm works just about the same on all the platforms but you know i remember i, I my facebook uh feed has never been negative because I just never went down that path. And I would, people would talk about, oh, it's so negative and blah, blah, blah. I'm like, well, that's not the experience I have on Facebook. You know, I just don't, I, I follow nature and Disney stuff. And I, you know what I mean? You're, it's, you're intentional. Absolutely. And, 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 and during, and you know, there are people that I follow that, that obviously go down a different path and I have on, well, not, you can't, I, mean, I guess you can't unfollow, but you know, hide people when it starts because it will bring in that negative.